Hi, John Rhodes here and welcome back. A big hello to all my subscribers and thanks for those of you that have just subscribed. It really does help the channel an awful lot. If you've only just tuned in, well, thanks for doing so. Stay tuned because there's going to be loads of other interesting cases in the pipeline. In this video presentation, I'm looking at a fairly routine molar root canal treatment. It's a mandibular right first molar, but there were a few hurdles along the way, and I'll show you how I overcame these as I went through the treatment. Hope you enjoy it. So here you can see the preoperative radiograph, the mandibular right first molar. The tooth has a mixture of different restorative materials coronally. There's a large periapical radiolucency around the distal root. The canals in the mesial root are moderately sclerosed. I've isolated the tooth with a Hugh Freedy Black Edition size 14 rubber dam clamp and non-latex rubber dam. This is the restoration which I'm going to remove with a long tapered diamond burr and I'll speed this bit up for you. With the restorative material out of the way I can now refine the margins of the tooth and also gain access to the pulp chamber. I do this in the region of the distal root first and then progress mesially. There are some calcifications over the orifices of the root canals and here I'm just exploring them with the DG16 endoprobe. I couldn't get access to the MB root orifice. There was some calcified material over it and you'll see I have to remove this in order to get patency. So the first hurdle in this case was getting down the MB canal. The orifice wasn't patent, so I used a small LN burr just to remove any dentine and then an ultrasonic StarTex 3 tip to blast away any dentine and then the canal was patent and I could continue with my coronal flaring.
coronal flaring is now complete and here you can see the mesial canals. I'm using a watch winding action with the size 10 flexophile followed by low amplitude filing action in order to progress down the root canal to the full working length confirmed with the electronic apex locator. In this case I used a nickel titanium reciprocating edge one instrument size small to prepare all the root canals. And just when I was done, I located a middle distal canal. That's three canals in the distal root. I noticed that my file was unwinding and so it was very important to change instruments to prevent instrument separation. So back in with the new instrument I can continue tapering to the full working length. Don't forget these instruments work very hard and there are often acute curvatures in the buccolingual plane that you cannot see on a radiograph. Check this out, where the most debris is collecting on the new instrument happens to be exactly where the previous instrument had been unwinding. If I'd used that, I could have ended up with a separation.
patency is confirmed throughout preparation using a size 10 flexophile and I'm irrigating the majority of the time with 3% sodium hypochlorite. So super exciting to find that third distal canal midway through the treatment and here you can see I've fully prepared all three canals and we're now starting the irrigation sequence. Here you can see sodium hypochlorite in the access cavity bubbling away in the root canals and doing its work. I'm going to agitate the solution with a Satellec IRISAFE ultrasonic tip. However, because there's not much volume of irrigant, it soon dries out and I have to continue dripping irrigant into the access with the syringe. Here's that sodium hypochlorite solution bubbling away in the distal canal of the molar tooth. I'm now doing a preliminary cone fit and I'll take a radiograph in a minute just to check the lengths before obturating.
lengths were all good apart from the MB canal that I felt was a little long and so I snipped back the cone half a millimetre. In this case, the tooth is going to be restored by the referring dentist with a full coverage crown. And I'm going to provide a core using a fibre post and dual cure composite. Some of you asked whether it's possible to fit the matrix band with the rubber dam in place. And this is a case where I've done just that. A post hole was prepared in the distal canal using a Gates Glidden size 2 and a small post drill with water spray. I use a phosphoric acid etch and then use dual cure bonding agent that's prime and bond with an activator and dual cure composite Corex Flow. Here's a nice little high magnification view down the post hole before applying bonding agent and cementing the fibre post. I'm using the yellow filter on the microscope to avoid setting materials prematurely. An auto matrix was fitted to the tooth with the rubber dam clamp in place and then a core built up using dual cure composite. Here you can see the preoperative radiograph again with the periapical radiolucency around the distal root, the moderately sclerosed mesial root canals and the mixture of restorative material coronally. The case was obturated with vertically compacted gutta perca and you can see this has highlighted lots of lateral anatomy especially towards the apex of both roots. In an angled view, you can see the three distal root canals all obturated and a good coronal apical seal. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to stay tuned because there's going to be plenty more cases in the pipeline. Subscribe perhaps if you haven't already and above all, enjoy your endo.